Hi everybody, welcome to Cake Tastic Cakes. It's Jen. I'm going to show you today how to make rarity from My Little Pony. And if you find this video helpful, please like, subscribe so you can find me again. And here we go. All right, I'm going to start with the body. Take your cylinder, roll it out nice and thick, cut off a wedge of it, and that's going to become the main torso of our My Little Pony. The end, one end, you're going to leave it nice and rounded off because that's going to become her, her bottom. And the front, we're going to taper and trim to turn into where her head is going to attach. I'm just making sure to shape it so that the shoulders and the back area is a little bit lower. Her rump is nice and round and my little pony-ish. <laughs> and the front gets a little thinner too, just so you get a good shape like that. Once you get a good shape, you're happy with the shape. Trim off a little bit at the top at an angle. That's where her head is going to go. It's going to sit there and on top of her front legs, which is what I'm making right here. All right, so you roll another cylinder, lots of cylinders with this thing, um, but roll it kind of at an angle. So when you cut it and press the one end down like I'm doing and turn it, it'll make it nice and flat. But her, but my little pony legs tend to flare out at the bottom, kind of like bell-bottom jeans. So make sure they, they do flare a little bit and they taper at the top. Once you get a good length for the front hooves, trim off any extra, make it nice and smooth, and then put it into place. If it looks good, that's when you add your water. So there it is, a little bit of water and a paintbrush. You guys know the drill by now, I'm sure. And make sure nothing else sticks to it, just the gum paste, and then press it into place. Um, as you remember, I'm sure, from the intro picture, she's kind of smelling a bunch of flowers, so that's why the hooves are down and they're going to be in front of her like that. All right, so once you get the first hoof done, or leg, or whatever you want to call it, you measure up another one, make sure it's the same length, smooth it all out, make sure it flares on the bottom, and then using some more water, just put it into place. And make sure you press it in nice and good. Okay, now you're going to do the back legs. We're going to do the legs first on this pony. Uh, the back legs are the same as the front legs. They're a little bit thicker. So don't make them quite as skinny. They still flare at the bottom. And I put a bend in it, as you can see, for a knee. And then trim it sideways to make it a little narrower. So she has, I don't even know what it's called, the the brown part <laughs> that connects the leg to the horse that you see in pictures and things. All right, that's all I'm doing here. I'm just creating a little bend, making a knee out of it flattening off the one end, put some water in, and then press it up against her. Make sure the back leg isn't too long because you don't want it, you know, kind of weird looking. It shouldn't go too much further than her shoulder, as you can see there. Okay, when you get, you're happy with the first one, go ahead and make the second one, match it up to make sure it's the same size, and then stick it on the other side and press it into place. There you go. So now you've got that, and we're going to do the head. Start with a ball, a nice ball. Put it up to the body a few times to make sure the proportion looks good. Don't stick anything in place yet. And once you get the right size, then you're going to start shaping. Their, no, their muzzles aren't, they're very pointy. From the side, it's almost like a beak. It curves upward and then it flattens off on the top. So I'm pinching off, and they're very small. They have tiny little muzzles or snouts or noses, whatever you want to call it. So don't make it too big. Just Pull and push off and section off a little area and then make sure you pinch it so it's kind of flat at the top and sharp and pointed and then downward. You can see it in these images a little bit. It's, it's hard to see, but if you Google images of them, you're going to see what I mean. The eyes are huge on these things, okay? They have definitely got a Lolita thing going on. So using my ball tool, I'm creating two very large eye sockets. They are not quite on either side of the head, but they are very far apart. So don't have them too close together. It's not going to look quite right. And the eyes lift all the way pretty much to the top of the head all, and down to the muzzle. So like I said, they're really big. They are not circular. They are oval. So be careful with how you shape them and make sure you kind of, you can see I'm using that small tip to press down and inward. They kind of are angled toward the center in the, in the inner corner of the eye. And that's what I'm trying to do there. Flatten it off the bottom a little bit. Make sure the arch of the eye stays nice and high. And yeah, definitely not quite anime-y, but darn close. All right, so I'm just using a knife, or geez, not a knife, 
just using that pointer tool, just rounding off the muzzle, flatting, pinching off the top to make sure it's nice and flat, just like before. And there you go. When you place it on, you can see how it's going to look. Um, like I said, you're not going to add anything yet. <laughs> I added two little nostril holes that you can kind of see there. And using the circle just made a smile. The purple is going to be her hair. Her head is attached now with some water. It's, I can't tell if it looks what color it looks to you guys, but it's, it is purple. She's got a dark purple mane and tail. It's a long rectangle. I, as you can see, I use the circle to cut a wedge out of it so it will fit the shape of her head. And her hair kind of just curls, flips over at the top and then curls up on the side. And that's the position I'm trying to get to hold there. It's rather long and it does cover her one eye a little bit. So you might want to add the eyes in first so you could skip this part and go to the eyes. But if you follow along, you'll be okay. That was her horn. As you can see, I rolled out a cylinder, put some lines, grooves into it, and then stuck it in place. The mane has to be a little to the side so her horn can sit centered and it sits in front of the hair, okay? These are ears. As you can see, it was just kind of a circled off wedge that I pressed down into a triangle shape in the center, cut it off at an angle because their, their ears sit up high on top of their head and to the side, so it's kind of tricky. Their ears are rather large too. Don't worry about the other one because the hair will cover it so you won't see it anyway. This is another rectangle that I'm trimming down and I use the circle again to cut it and curl it. It's going to be the other part of her mane because she has, it, it parts kind of in the middle and goes both ways. This side is shorter than the first side and goes behind the one ear as you can see, but it also does curl around too. Now I'm going to do her tail. Her tail is the same as her mane, just a real long kind of tapering piece of rectangly purple gum paste. You can see the shape, it kind of flares out fat and then goes skinny again. It's skinny at the start and kind of thin at the bottom too. And then start just curling it. Um, you don't want to curl it tightly, just kind of loose. So it's like a giant ringlet basically. And when you're happy with it, put it into place. You're going to see that the curls are going to sag a little bit like you can see right here. If you need to, I used a piece of paper towel that you just roll up nice and tight and shove inside, kind of like a curler to hold the curl. And once it hardens, it'll just slide right out. It won't stick or anything, so don't worry about that. I'm filling in the eyes now, as you can see, little balls of white. Shove them on in there. Make sure they don't stick out because their eyes are not bulgy. Rarity has light blue eyes, so I put two little pieces of light blue gum paste. And there's the one. Don't make them too small. They fill up maybe a, mm, half of the eye. If her eyes are open wide, probably even a little bit more. We're going to add eyelids to her, so that's why these are going to be a little bit smaller than otherwise I would recommend doing. So as you can see, just put them at the bottom. I'm going to have her looking at the flowers that she's holding in her front feet. So that's why she's looking down and toward the center the way she is there. Have her looking however you want, you know, whatever. A little bit of black. This is going to become the pupil of the eyes. Again, since she's looking downward and toward the center, that's where I'm directing her gaze. And I'm just using the back end of my pokey tool there to round it off, make sure it's not covering up too much or, or crooked or anything like that. Now using the same color blue as her irises, I'm going to add her eyelids. I rolled out an oval as you saw and cut off the top wedge. Match it up. Don't add water until it's the right size. Match it up and then stick it into place. You want the flat part across the eyes. Pretty level. You don't want them like slanting at an angle. You want them going pretty flat across. So make sure your eyelids are basically the same size. As you can see, I matched them up there. Add the second one in place very carefully. This is where I said you might want to add the eyes before you do the hair because it was in the way a little bit there. Now I'm going to add the beauty spots on her rump. She has three blue diamonds on each cheek. And so I rolled out my blue nice and thin. It's the same color as before as her eyes and eyelid. And I made a, two slices down to make a long rectangle. And now I'm cutting it at a gentle angle to create the diamonds. If you eyeball it, you're going to see how big they need to be in order to be even. So just cut a whole bunch out and pick the best looking ones. 
Use a little bit of water on your paintbrush and hopefully it'll come off the counter or whatever you're cutting on. And then press them into place. All right, like I said, she's got three on each side. So I just did the one in the middle and then the two off to the side like that. And there it is on the other side. And you can see the paper towel holding her tail curl right there very nicely. And make sure you space them properly too so it doesn't look weird or anything. Now I'm using blue edible food coloring marker to make the diamond pattern. You go from each corner toward the center but don't connect in the center. So you're going to trace a little tiny diamond in the middle and then have the lines. You can see pretty well here that the lines don't all go to the center. And then you're going to just connect them on the inside. So you have a little diamond in the center with lines connecting to the corners of the outside. Okay, now we're doing her hair. This is a purple food coloring marker. Just drawing some lines just to make it look like she has some hair and it's not just one big flat piece of gum paste. So just going over, making some lines, doing the little ringlet part. I'm going to do it to all of her hair and her tails. There's one part, there's the other part. And eventually we'll get to the tail, but we don't want you to rush into that. We're going to take our time and look at this for a minute first. So, and if you want to do different poses, I'm going to have other My Little Ponies coming out too. I ended up doing three or four of them, I forget at this point. But I did a bunch, and they, I did them all in different poses. So you'll see them. And there you go with the tail. Just follow the curls around as best you can. All right, now we're going to give her her eyelashes because these ponies have crazy eyelashes. All right, I rolled out the black nice and thin, connect it to the bottom of the eyelid. The inside connects right to the edge, but the outside is going to flare out because, of course, they have big blinky eyelids or eyelashes, excuse me. And you're going to give her bottom eyelashes too. So the bottom one you're going to tuck around so it follows the edge of the pupil and flare it out at the bottom again so it goes out a little bit. The top and bottom eyelashes do not touch each other, so don't allow them to connect. They stay separate. It's a little bit hard to see, but I'm going to hold her up and then you'll see it here. There you go. Now you can see what I mean. And you can see her little smile there. All right, now I'm giving her a little highlight in her eye. I just did one little white dot of gum paste on each eye. So my little ponies tend to have tons of highlights in their eyes, depending on how excited they are. I just did one because she's kind of in more of a peaceful pose. So if you want to add more, go right ahead. Just do them in different sizes. Have like one big one and then one little one. Don't make them the same size. It looks better when they're different. All right, I have her holding a bunch of flowers. I have this little press kit thing to make flowers out of. If you don't have this, you can just make one flower, cut it out yourself, you know, make it yourself. It's not a big deal. Just roll out some circles of the same size and press them together in the center and boom, you got a flower. Uh, you could have her holding something else. She doesn't have to be holding anything at all. She could be holding a book because it is rarity after all. Um, she could be holding a, a leaf or a butterfly or nothing like I said so if you want her to have something I did flowers a little bouquet here you can see I'm just used them made them out of pink with a little dark pink in the center she could be holding the number of the kid's birthday or a name or a little banner or something like that so once she's all done she is super cute and sweet and you've got a lovely my little pony for your kid's birthday cake all right, please check out my other videos. Hopefully you liked this and found this helpful. I'll catch you all again next time, and thank you very much. Bye.